Hi, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Hope everyone's having a good week. We have been going through 1 Corinthians, and we're going to continue that study today. We're going to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Pull your Bibles out, follow along with us. See what God's Word says for yourself. 1 Corinthians 12, at verse 28, it says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. The point that he's making is that God has, a, has arranged these things in the church exactly like he wants them. What the Corinthians were doing was they were actually envying one another, even envying spiritual gifts. Um, or they were proud of themselves, they were puffed up. They thought that one gift was superior to another gift. And the gift that they really keyed on was speaking in tongues, just because to the, to the outward eye and the outward ear, if you will, it would have been uh, fairly sensational. So uh, they, they keyed on that. I think you can tell that from the upcoming uh, couple of chapters. And, and the point that the Holy Spirit is making through Paul as he writes this is that, look, God has arranged the church exactly like he wants it. Okay, he's appointed all these things. And that does not mean that apostles are better than prophets, are better than teachers, are better than... All the, anybody else, that's not the point. The point is exactly what it says in verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care for one another. That the Lord has done this exactly like he wants it, so that the, each member can care for the other members exactly as the Lord wants them to. Verse 29 now says, Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And the answer to that is no. Those are all rhetorical questions. Um, not everybody was an apostle. Not everybody was a prophet. Now, does that mean they were less Christian? No. That means that this is how the Lord has arranged the church for the Corinthians. Um, it's a sad thing that today, even today, um, just as an application, as sort of a side note that our Pentecostal friends will say that you must speak in tongues to be saved because what Scripture has just said is, do all speak with tongues? And the answer is no. Even back then, not everybody spoke with tongues because the Lord had not given them that gift. But the Lord has done all this exactly like He wants, and they needed to stop envying one another, and they needed to start looking out for one another, because in verse 31 he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Okay, and what he's going to talk about, he's going to talk about prophesying, especially in chapter 14. He's going to talk about prophesying, and the reason that prophesying is considered, um, as it says, the best gift, and that does not mean that it is superior to the other gifts, but prophesying, the whole purpose of prophesying, and according to verse 3 of chapter 14, is he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Prophesying, the reason they were supposed to desire that was because we seek to edify one another. They were to seek each other's edification. So that's, that's what it was. They were desiring to speak in tongues. They didn't really care about anybody else's edification. And they, needed, they needed, to, needed to understand, and they needed to desire the best gifts. But then Paul says, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And that is extremely important. There is something, he says, there is something better than the apostles, the prophets, the miraculous teacher, you know, all these things. He says there is a more excellent way than that. And that is exactly how God wants it. God God has done this. God has ushered in the age of the miraculous. But just as assuredly as these gifts have been given, there is going to come a time where these gifts are going to stop. He would not say, and yet I show you a more excellent way. A lot of folks have the idea that 1 Corinthians 13, that the latter half of it is speaking about a time that has not even happened today, some 2,000 years later. Um, they think it happens at a point later in time. Why would, why would Paul say, I'm going to show you a more excellent way if it did not apply to the Corinthians? And that's the thing. It is going to apply to the Corinthians because he's going to tell them what the church is going to need. If the church is going to survive, if the church is going to prosper, 
Right now, the church in Corinth, and I don't mean that the church was going to cease to exist. That's not what I mean. But the church in Corinth was coming apart at the seams. There was divisions among them. So he says, you know what? You guys need, you guys need something. You need something if the church is going to survive and prosper there in Corinth. And what you're going to need at verse 1, And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. You know, there's a conversation that happens a lot of times. Our Protestant friends believe in faith-only salvation, a lot of them if not all of them, they believe in faith-only salvation. And a lot of times we'll get into discussions with them, and we'll talk about James chapter 2, that faith and works must go hand in hand. Faith without works is dead. And we have those arguments with them. You have faith only, faith and works. Faith only, faith and works. And we have those arguments until we're blue in the face, and we completely forget about 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because the point that is being made is when he says, and though I have all faith in verse 2, I can have all faith in the world, but if I don't have love, it is nothing. It is nothing. Just as, just as faith without works is dead, faith without love is nothing. It is dead. But not only that, verse 3 says, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and give my body to be burned and, and all those things, he says, if I don't have love, it's nothing. Well, what is he talking about? If I have all the faith, but if I don't have love, it's nothing. But guess what? If I have all the faith and all the works, but if I don't have love, guess what? It's, it's nothing as well. Sometimes we forget about love. When they came to Jesus and they said, what is the great commandment? What did Jesus talk about? You can infer, you can infer from what he said, it includes faith and works. But when they came to Jesus, what did he say? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these things hang all the law and the prophets. Now, does that include faith? Does that include works? Absolutely. But what is the point that the Lord is making? What is the motivation behind it? It is love. You love the Lord your God with everything you got, and you love your neighbor as yourself. That is it. And if you understand that, if you understand loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself, then you will have no trouble understanding faith and works. And that's how the church survives. That's how we grow in grace and knowledge. That's how, that's how everything happens. And that's the point that's being made in 1 Corinthians 13, because that is the more excellent way. Faith, hope, love. We'll talk more about this chapter next week. Consider these things. Think about them. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. God bless you. Have a good week. Until next time.